Okay, so magandang umaga po. We are operating under international standards in this uh, committee. When we say 10, we start at 10. Nema, epa, we, we start early so we can end early. Tama ba yun, Yusek? Uh, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I call our hearing to order. Welcome to the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations. Senator Tolentino will be arriving uh, after a few more minutes. So this morning, we have uh, clustered our agenda into three uh, topics. The first one would be the two bilateral agreements with the Russian Federation on extradition and mutual legal assistance. So treaties po ito. Then the second one, which we will discuss first, not discuss, then, the, then we will move to the, to the two legislative measures, the Good Samaritan at Sea, which is authored by Senator Tolentino, and then the West Philippine Sea Victory Day, Senate Bill 376 by Senator Dilima. Okay, I will solicit your inputs and your opinions. And then last but not the least, our third topic would be the Conferment of the award called the first class of the Order of Diplomatic Service Merit to one of your uh, brothers in the profession, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the Republic of South Korea, of, of Korea, His Excellency Raul S. Hernandez by the Government of the Republic of Korea. So that's how uh, our meeting will flow. Uh, <clears throat> so let us start now with, uh, no, um, before that, may I ask the uh, committee secretary, Ms. Su Kandao, to uh, acknowledge our resource person so that the records will reflect their attendance and their being on time. Thank you, Your Honor, Mr. Chairperson. We have with us today as resource persons, I will just read everybody for all the subject matters, sir. We have for the Department of Foreign Affairs, we have USEC Undersecretary Enrique Manalo. Good morning, sir. Assistant Secretary Generoso Calonge. Good morning, po. Assistant Secretary Maynardo Monte Alegre. Good morning, sir. Director Johan M. Andal, Ms. Susan Phoebe Sabado. We have also Acting Assistant Secretary Igor Bailen. Good morning, sir. And Assistant Secretary Amelita Aquino for the DFA. And we have, sir, from the Department of Justice, we have Senior State Counsel Freti Ganchoon. Oh, I'm sorry, we have Undersecretary Mark Perete from the DOJ. Good morning, sir. And we have Attorney Freddy Ganchoon. We have Senior State Counsel Mildred Bernadette Albor. We have State Counsel Maria Lorene Swan. From the National Bureau of Investigation, we have Attorney Val Derek Ignacio from the Legal Service and also Attorney Alice Aukit Baneg from the Legal Service. And the Philippine National Police is represented by Police Colonel Arthur Liamas, Police Lieutenant Colonel, uh, Police Captain Anthony Sanchez. Good morning, sirs. We have from the Department of National Defense, we have Undersecretary Ricardo David Jr. Good morning, sir. And we're from the Philippine Navy, we have Colonel Erwin Machica of the JAGS, GSC. Morning, sir. We have from the Maritime Industry Authority, Attorney, Attorney Virgilio Calag. Good morning, sir. Anyone who has not been acknowledged? Sir, we have acknowledged everybody. Thank you. Uh, when, when a new resource person arrives, we acknowledge a panarayban. So the chair now... Uh, acknowledges the presence of Senator Tol Tolentino. Tol ng bayan pero idol ko. Tol idol ka na, So, uh, 
So, Senator Tolentino has agreed that we first tackle the treaties okay, before his bill. So, 2019 marks the 43rd year of the Philippine-Russia diplomatic relations, which formally started in 1976 when the Philippines forged the trade agreement with the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, or the USSR, in Moscow on June 2, 1976. Correct me if some of my facts are wrong, huh? but... but that, that allow me to continue. In 1999, the Russian Federation assumed all of the USSR's commitments with the Philippines. So from agreements on culture, defense, economics, taxation, and many more, we are now poised to make commitments to enhance our security cooperation with Russia through extradition and mutual legal assistance in criminal matters. When approved, this Philippine-Russia extradition treaty will be the 14th such agreement of the Republic of the Philippines with other countries. And we have already extradition treaties with Indonesia, Thailand, Federated States of Micronesia, Canada, Australia, South Korea, United States of America, Hong Kong, Switzerland, Spain, India, China, UK, including Northern Ireland. On the other hand, the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty will be our 10th. And we have already existing ones with Australia, China, Hong Kong, Korea, Spain, Switzerland, UK, US, and ASEAN. So we have now come to the point of the fourth industrial revolution where cities are smart and countries are supposed to seamlessly acquire and share information through the use of more advanced frontier technology, which is blurring lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. But also as a consequence thereof, this will include smarter people with ill intent and seamless criminalities, especially on cross-border threats such as terrorism and violent extremism, cyber issues, money, money laundering, persons, weapons, drugs, contrabands, and other forms of trafficking, and other serious atrocities, including domestic crimes committed by foreign nationals. At this point, the chair acknowledges the arrival of Senator Win Gachalian. Para sa akin, yan ang winner. <laughs> Thus, these treaties are crucial in the global campaign to address current security challenges, to prosecute and suppress crimes, since it will now provide a platform for a much more effective means of obtaining evidence and to facilitate the return of fugitives or wanted persons from one jurisdiction to another. So, unless there are opening statements from my fellow senators, if none, then I will now... Uh, pass the floor, recognize the DFA to make their presentation on the two treaties. Okay, Nato? Okay, Yusek? Yusek Manalo, please. Thank you very much. Senator Aquilino Pimentel, the third chairperson of the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations, Senator Francis Tolentino, vice chairman of the committee, Senator Gachalian, good morning. Uh, I have the honor to present the uh, position of the Department of Foreign Affairs on the importance of the Senate's concurrence on the ratification of the treaty between the Republic of the Philippines and the Russian Federation on extradition and the treaty between the Republic of the Philippines and the Russian Federation on mutual legal assistance in criminal matters. These treaties were signed by former Secretary of Justice Vitalino Aguirre and Russian Minister of Justice Alexander Konovalov on November 13, 2017. The President signed the instrument of ratification of the extradition treaty on 17 September 2019 and the mutual legal assistance treaty on 26 September 2019. The concurrence of the Senate is required per Section 21, Article 7 of our Constitution. Once these treaties enter into force, the Philippines will not only enhance bilateral legal cooperation with Russia, but will also be fulfilling an international obligation 
under various international legal instruments, such as the various UN conventions against terrorism, the UN Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime, and the UN Convention Against Corruption. Your Honors, states historically have grappled with the issues of bringing sus suspected criminals and fugitives to justice and identifying ways for further cooperation in the investigation and prosecution of crimes, especially transnational organized crimes. Criminal groups have been able to frustrate domestic authorities by fleeing to another country and even by sending the profits from crime beyond the reach of domestic authorities. So to address this matter, international cooperation uh, between states in the extradition of requested persons and the prevention, investigation, and prosecution of offenses through cooperation and mutual, mutual legal assistance in criminal matters is increasingly becoming more and more important as states realize how such international conventions are vital for the security of their territory and also the safety of their peoples. Your Honors, extradition as defined under the Philippine extradition law is, quote, the removal of an accused from the Philippines with the object of placing him or her at the disposal of foreign authorities to enable the requesting state or government to hold them in connection with any criminal investigation directed against them or the execution of a penalty imposed on them under the penal or criminal law of the requesting state or government. Under the Philippine extradition law, the extradition of a person found within the country's territory is possible only if the Philippines has an extradition treaty with the other state. With respect to the Philippines, as the requesting state, the extradition is governed by the provisions of the applicable treaty or convention entered into by the country. As the Honorable Chairman mentioned, the Philippines has extradition treaties now with 13 countries, Australia, Canada, China, Hong Kong, uh, semi-autonomous region, India, Indonesia, Republic of Korea, Micronesia, Spain, Switzerland, Thailand, United Kingdom, and the United States. The extradition treaty with Russia has substantially the same standard provisions found in the similar treaties of the Philippines with the countries I just mentioned. Turning to the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty, the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty, or uh, as we call MLAT, its abbreviation, provides states with a framework for seeking legal assistance in the investigation, prosecution, and punishment of criminal offenses and in legal and judicial proceedings related to criminal matters. The usual basis of mutual legal assistance in criminal matters are treaties. Without a treaty, assistance by other states is generally limited to service of documents or letters rogatory and can be provided only on the basis of reciprocity and also on an ad hoc basis. Thus, MLATs are important because they make assistance compulsory and obligatory. Presently, as mentioned by Your Honor, we have nine MLATs at the moment, Australia, China, Hong Kong, SAR, South Korea, Spain, Switzerland, the UK, and the US. If we uh, concur on the treaty with Russia, this will be our ninth MLAT. The scope of legal assistance as defined in this treaty with the Russian Federation includes the service of documents, taking of evidence, including testimony of persons, provision of information, documents and records, execution of searches and seizures, location and identification of persons and objects, requests for appearances of witnesses, victims and experts, and the freezing of assets. Given the high incidence and increasing territorial scope of transnational crime, MLATs are becoming more and more necessary as vital tools to secure evidence witnesses and proceeds of such crimes which are beyond our physical and legal jurisdiction. Your Honors, in general, the advantages of concurrence in the ratification of these treaties submitted for you to consider complement each other as both serve as effective tools of international legal cooperation in the prevention and, 
and suppression of crimes, especially transnational crimes such as terrorism, drug trafficking, money laundering, and trafficking in persons. Having an extradition treaty with the Russian Federation will allow the Philippines to increase its network of countries that it can request extradition of fugitives, thereby making it difficult for international fugitives to find a safe haven from criminal prosecution or service of sentence. It will also play, enable both of our countries to deepen understanding of our respective legal systems and allow more exchanges of expert knowledge in international criminal law. A mutual legal assistance treaty with Russia will help our two countries obtain a better understanding of our legal systems and criminal justice procedures. The MLAT will also be instrumental in providing better understanding of the criminal statutes of the Philippines and Russia, identifying the forms of assistance available for prosecutors and other relevant law enforcement authorities, forging better understanding and familiarity on criminal law and criminal procedures, and finally, promoting mutual trust and confidence as well as an exchange of law enforcement personnel between, the Russian, between Russia and the Philippines. Finally, both treaties would also, once brought into force, strengthen our bilateral relations with the Russian Federation. Moreover, as I mentioned, the treaties are in accordance with universally accepted and well-established principles of international law, where the principles of sovereign equality, territorial integrity, and non-intervention in the domestic affairs of other states are explicitly stated. Russia has also notified the Philippines that both treaties have been ratified by Moscow last August 2018. Finally, your honors, the Department of Foreign Affairs hopes for the concurrence of the Senate on the presidential ratification of the treaty between the Republic of the Philippines and the Russian Federation on extradition and the treaty between the Republic of the Philippines and the Russian Federation on mutual legal assistance in criminal matters. Thank you. Secretary, uh, you mentioned that the uh, for both no, for both treaties they followed the the usual uh, template for an extradition treaty and for an MLAT. So, but is there any unique feature in uh, the, the treaties with Russia? Thank you very much. Perhaps I could return. I could turn to my colleague. Unique or new, right. new, new, yeah. new word, new concept being introduced. Uh, yes, you, Sec. Pereta. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for the extradition treaty with Russia, there are two new novel provisions which are not found in other treaties, existing treaties that the Philippines have with other countries. Um, the first one is on the confidentiality of the information pertaining to an extradition request. Although by practice, um, we do maintain confidentiality regarding requests for extradition, but this has been made explicit in the extradition treaty with the Russian Federation. And the second one has to do with the retroactive application of the extradition treaty. Uh, so this is the first time that a retroactivity clause has been included in an extradition treaty entered into by the Philippine government. Those are essentially the two uh, new features which are found in the extradition treaty. With Pero yung confidentiality, since, you, since you pr we practiced it already, and some countries maybe practiced it even without being uh, expressly being stated in the treaty. So linagay na lang. But can you tell us more about what this is retroactive application? If, if, the, if the treaty is effective uh, or on a certain date, you will... We, we, will, uh, we will treat it as effective even before that date? Is that, is that the meaning of the re retroactive? In essence, Mr. Chair, uh, if an offense is deemed a criminal offense and extraditable under the terms of the treaty, uh, even if the treaty was not yet in effect, if a request is made for an accused to be extradited because of that offense, then we are duty-bound to extradite. Uh, although we have already found a uh, jurisprudence to the effect that uh, where the Supreme Court said that such a retroactive application is not repugnant 
to the ex post facto provisions of our laws because precisely the court characterized an extradition agreement not as a substantive criminal law or as a procedural criminal law, but simply an agreement for the purpose of handing over custody over certain uh, criminals to another jurisdiction. But at the very least, uh, during the date of actual extradition, the treaty must have been in effect. Yes, yes you know, yes, yeah, that's a, at the very least. Right? So the, even though the crime for which the person is being requested for extradition, when it happened uh, that no extradition treaty was yet in place between Russia and the Philippines. You meaning none, right? Yes, Mr. Chair. Provide us a copy of that citation. Uh, when was that uh, rendered by the Supreme Court? And uh, to your recollection, perhaps at NDI, ilan ba ang pwedeng extradite coming from Russia uh, requested by the Philippine government and coming from the Philippines requested by Russia, as, as, as we speak? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, first, let me address the first query relating to the citation of the case. Uh, the case re relied upon by the Department of Justice in uh, eventually accepting this retroactivity clause uh, was the decision of the Supreme Court in Wright versus Court of Appeals, GR number 113213, decided on 15 August of 1994. Uh, but as to the uh, cases of possible extradition requests by the Philippines to Russia and uh, vice versa. May we? That must refer to an American case, uh, right? Your Honor, this is an extradition treaty entered into by the Philippines and Australia. It's a Philippine Supreme Court decision. Yes, yes Your okay. Honor. Okay. Uh, I understand you have a presentation, Pana. You say it's it's we'll quite lengthy, Your Honor. But, ah, uh, but so so find a way lang to uh, find a way to uh, shorten your presentation. Yes. Okay. So yes, Mr. Chair. Can you be allowed to answer my second question? Ah, no, my second yes. question. Uh, figures. Uh, may we oh. may we be given time, Your Honor, to provide uh, just statistics on requests or even uh, possible requests which may be made by Russia as well as the Philippines to the Russian side. So this, this would uh, mean that there are several uh, Russians now in Philippine custody, in Philippine jails, or several Filipinos in Russian jails. Well, uh, as to, uh, Your Honor, uh, in fact, uh, about two weeks ago, the uh, Embassy of Russia has met with the Department of Justice requesting for um, updates regarding cases involving Russian nationals. But the, the Russians in Philippine jails committed offenses in Philippine territory. That is correct, So, right, so they're right, rightfully held here, di ba? Yes. Yes, May drugs, di ba? Meron. Meron. Yeah, and meron din yung violation ng uh, environmental laws natin. Tapos yung Filipinos naman held in Russian jails must have committed uh, violations of Russian law in Russian territory. Yes, Your Honor. Ano ba, mga killing ba, murder, ganun? Uh, that, that I would have ah, to uh, so we need ascertain. NBI, uh, are you familiar with the, with the group uh, Solskeb Kaya Bratba? Solseb Kaya Bratba is the Russian Mafia. Kung merong, kung merong sigurong sinasabi siya na nakarating dito, human trafficking, illegal drugs, ito na yon. Are you familiar with that? Uh, unfortunately, Your Honor, we are not privy to that information considering that we are from the legal service. However, sir, uh, as of right now, sir, I am fully aware that we do not have any Russian national in our detention facility. Apala. Uh, DOJ, uh, NB, you said, wala daw? Sa NBI, NBI, wala daw. I was asking him about the Russian mafia. Sir, maybe on our investigative side, sir, meron silang information, but we are not aware aware of that, sir. So, Chair, just to re reiterate what uh, Senator Tolentino mentioned, I ilan, bang, ilan bang Russian at ilan bang Filipino ang pinag-uusapan natin who will be qualified under this uh, extradition treaty? 
Uh, do we have that number? Can we get that number? Because uh, you know, just to give us a full picture of the gravity and the importance of this uh, treaty. Yeah, we understand, Your Honor, uh, and we will be providing the committee with uh, such statistics. Uh, but what I know so far are the cases that have been brought to our attention. But we will be collating the data, Your Honor, for the perusal of the committee. Go ahead, Yusek, with your present presentation. Find a way to shorten it na lang and then emphasize the most important slides or concepts. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, let me just go straight to the salient provisions of the or features of the Philippine-Russia extradition uh, agreement. First, the treaty consists of 18 articles and obliges both countries to extradite to each other pursuant to the provisions of the treaty persons whom the authorities in the requesting state have charged with or convicted of an extraditable offense. As to the extraditable offenses, the treaty adopts a non-list dual criminality approach which requires that both countries must deem the offense as a crime before an extradition request may be uh, appreciated. There is, there is also a requirement that if a person sought has already been convicted and is wanted for enforcement of a sentence of imprisonment or other forms of deprivation of liberty, extradition shall be granted if at the time of the request, a period of at least six months of imprisonment or other forms of deprivation of liberty remains to be served. In cases where the extradition request relates to an offense which is punishable by death and the requested state does not impose the death penalty, then a provision is inserted which requires that the requesting state must give assurances that the requested state considers sufficient that if the death penalty is imposed by the course of the requesting state, that shall not be carried out. There is also a requirement uh, on trial in absentia and essentially the, the treaty recognizes trial in absentia but requires that due process considerations be sufficiently complied with. Earlier, Mr. Chair, we discussed the confidentiality, confidentiality clause found in the treaty. So let me now move to uh, the mandatory grounds for refusal. Under the treaty, there are a number of grounds, uh, mandatory grounds for refusal of an extradition request. And these are as follows. First, the request involves a political or military offense. Second, the person sought to be extradited was previously tried and convicted or acquitted for the same offense for which extradition is requested. Third, the person whose extradition is requested cannot, according to the laws of either country, be prosecuted or punished by reason of lapse of time or by any other reason under the law of the requested state. And fourth, the person sought is a national of the requested state. Russia has insisted that the extradition request uh, involving its citizen will be refused. So, because of that, because of that, uh, because of that requirement or position taken by the Russian side, uh, this provision has been made reciprocal. In which case, that if the Philippine a Filipino citizen is uh, being sought to be extradited by Russia, we will likewise refuse such a request. So those are the relevant, uh, the salient provisions or features of the extradition treaty that we have with the Russian Federation, Your Honors. In so far as the mutual legal assistance treaty is concerned, may I be allowed to check, excuse me. Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to acknowledge Senator Bato, oh, the President. But it's a question about nationality. Is that new or standard in our other sedition treaties? Is that new because of Russia's uh, position? Uh, in other treaties that we have entered into, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, it is discretionary. Ah, so in this is a mandatory. Yes, yeah. but in, in yeah. this particular instance, it has been made mandatory. Uh -huh. The refusal is mandatory. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. To be clarified again, and, and for the uh, 
benefit of Senator Bato who is very much interested in the death penalty. If a Russian citizen is sought to be extradited by Moscow and the penalty is death, are we allowed to send him back if we sign this, if you ratify this? Yes, Your Honor, subject to the condition that if and because at this point we do not impose the death penalty, assurances must be made by Russia that the death penalty, if uh, that is the penalty imposed by the court will not actually be carried out. So the Philippine government cannot allow the extradition if the purpose is to impose the penalty of death. The Philippines can request by virtue of this that the death penalty be not imposed. Is that correct? Uh, in essence, uh, Your Honor, it can be imposed by the courts in Russia but they must make an assurance that they will not execute. If the Filipino citizen sought to be extradited from Moscow by the Philippines is convicted of a crime punishable by death, can the Philippine government, can the Philippine government not request the non-imposition of the death penalty because we do not have a death penalty here yet. Sige, ituloy mo na yung death penalty kasi death penalty naman yan sa inyo, eh, di ba? If the subject of the extradition request is a Filipino, uh, Your Honor, and we are the ones requesting the extradition of that citizen to our jurisdiction, uh, Can Russia refuse? If can Russia refuse? Batas namin to, lumabag siya, punishable by death. Uh, considering your Dinabawi honor... Dinabawi natin, sabi na Russia, yes. hindi, nilabag niya ang batas namin, punishable by death. Can we, can we seek the extradition to prevent the imposition of the death penalty? We, well, if, uh, let me clarify your honor, if... Gulo, no? Kaya yeah. interesado si Senator Bato dyan. If, if in this case, the the individual is also considered a criminal in Russia. Yes. yes. Go ahead. Uh, the normal procedure there, Your Honor, is uh, first the requested state would see to it that the proceedings, the criminal proceedings against that individual will uh, be completed in its jurisdiction before an extradition may be granted. Yes, but the imposition of the death penalty. If the imposition is being carried out in the Philippines and Russia uh, has a law which prevents the imposition of a death penalty, then... No, Russia has a death penalty. Yes, yes. So in, in this case, what I'm saying, Your Honor, is because, number one, uh, at this point, we have not lifted the suspension on the... Baliktad yung sagot mo. Ang sinasabi ko, Filipino citizen convicted in Russia, death penalty about to be imposed, Philippines seeking the extradition to prevent the imposition of death penalty. Can we use this treaty? Well, it has not been tested yet, Your Honor, uh, whether an extradition treaty may be used to prevent the imposition of a death penalty so in the another treaty jurisdiction. Is silent. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, although uh, there is a somewhat similar case uh, which Malaysia, is, OFW, Indonesia. Yes, Your Honor, which uh, because of its possible legal repercussions, we might not be in a position so to discuss. So sa palagay siguro ng DFA, mas maganda may death penalty na rin sa Pilipinas para mas maganda yung reciprocity, di ba? Yes or no? I would defer to the Department of ah, Foreign the Affairs. De Depart Department, Department of mo. Foreign Affairs. Y Yusek Manalo, narinig mo yung question ni... So the, the, the DFA is now... Uh, for for that penalty to to have a more uh, smooth reciprocal relationship in so far as the implementation of this treaty is concerned diba mas para wala nang problema pareho na tayo mid death penalty so si DFA payag sa death penalty is that correct well in the hypothetical situation your honor if there were both laws are similar then obviously we would have to abide by them but normally the DFA would consult first with our DOJ partners to find out. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. J. Thank you. Uh, and, and basic uh, extradition is that the person requested to be extradited must have committed a crime f 
from the point of view of the requesting party. Diba? That it. is correct, Mr. Chair. Yan yung basic uh, assumption doon. Okay. So, uh, Secretary, uh, you said continue? Continue with your presentation? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, we now move on to the uh, salient provisions of the Treaty on Mutual Legal Assistance in Criminal Matters between the Philippines and the Russian Federation. Currently, the Philippines does not have a law on MLA, and the Department of Justice is crafting or in the process of drafting a bill on MLA with the support of the United Nations on uh, drugs and crime. Now, with respect to the salient provisions of our MLAT with the Russian Federation, it consists of 23 articles and has for its objective improving the effectiveness of the activity of both countries in combating crimes, including crimes relating to terrorism through cooperation and mutual legal assistance in criminal matters. It obliges both countries to grant each other comprehensive mutual legal assistance in criminal matters. One of the salient provisions of the MLAT with Russia has to do with dual criminality. The Philippine proposal was for the parties to be able to provide assistance under the treaty even in the absence of dual criminality. The Russian side explained that their law requires dual criminality for requests for assistance in criminal matters. But after an exhaustive discussion on this matter, a compromise was, was reached where we made it possible to make requests for legal assistance even in the absence of the, of the dual criminality principle. The other provision, uh, important provision in this treaty has to do with the return in its entirety of assets illegally acquired from the requesting state. So if a requesting state requests that assets um, illegally acquired and transferred to, another, to, to Russia in this particular case be returned, then there is a mechanism by which such return will be made. Also, in whenever law enforcers and uh, other agents assist us in our criminal investigation and prosecution, both parties are required to provide safe conduct passes for these agents. The costs of executing the requests, the ordinary costs are assumed by the uh, requested state, but extraordinary costs will be assumed by the requesting party. There are likewise provisions for refusal of a request for assistance such as when the execution of the request for assistance would impair the sovereignty, security, public order, or other essential interests of the requested state, when the execution of the request is contrary to the law of the requested state or does not comply with the provisions of the treaty, when the request relates to an offense which the person accused of criminal offense in the requesting state was convicted or acquitted in the requested state in connection with the same offense, when the request relates to a crime under a military law that is not a crime under general criminal law, when the requested state has substantial reasons to believe that the request was submitted in order to investigate, prosecute, or punish a person on account of the person's race, gender, faith, citizenship, ethnic origin, political activity, or conviction, affiliation with certain social groups, or that the position of that person may be prejudiced because of any of these reasons. So these, in essence, uh, your honors, Mr. Chair, are the salient provisions of our mutual legal assistance with the Russian Federation. Uh, same question, what are the uh, new novel concepts or provisions in the Russian MLAT compared to the nine other existing ones? The only uh, novel provision here, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, has to do with the dual criminal criminality requirement. This has been dispensed with uh, in this case, meaning that even if a request is anchored on an offense which is not criminalized in Russia, then they will still consider such a request. So in, the, in, in the nine other MLATs, dual pala? Dual? Requirement, ho, sir. Ah, yes. Sir. Bakit kaya ganun? I think it's better na hindi. Hindi na dual criminality. You want to help each other na, na nga eh. Uh, so, it's good. This is a more modern version kung ganun. Ha? 
uh, except no. except uh. in our agreement with the United States, Your Honor, uh, all the rest. United States, no dual, and then, no, 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 required, no required. Required, ah. Your Honor. Ah, so, so United, ulit, ulit, mali na, kasi baliktad, baliktad na, oh. Kasi, ang question ko muna, what is new with the Ra yes. PH, Russia, MLAT? Sabi mo, the, no, no more. Yes. No more. You have yes, released sir. us from the dual uh, criminality requirement. Samantalang sa Siam, ano, required, yes, your required yes. except, the U.S. So, U.S. is like Russia. Yes, uh, I stand corrected. Yan ang uh, U.S. Chair. is like Russia. So, tama yun. Uh, we should treat Russia like U.S. Uh, yes, Senator Tol. Uh, Senator Bato will not ask this. If a Filipino citizen convicted here, convicted here, is is uh, shipped to Russia for possible death penalty imposition. Can it be possible with this treaty? Kasi wala pa tayong death penalty. Yung ibang drug lords natin, padala natin sa Russia, doon na lang natin pa-convict pa death penalty. Gas chamber. Uh, this has to do with the extradition, uh, Your Honor. If an extradition request is made for a Filipino uh, to be extradited to Russia, uh, however, Your Honor, he was he was a member of the Bratba Russian Mafia. Uh, however, Your Honor, so there is a link to the Russian penal system. Uh, Can he be executed in Russia? In our uh, extradition treaty, Your Honor, with Russia, there is a clause on citizenship, which means that we will we may refuse we may refuse a request for extradition if it involves a Filipino citizen. Uh, that is because they were the ones who insisted on we that. We may so, refuse. Yes, Your Honor. But we can send. Theoretically, Your Honor, we can. But pragmatic considerations may far Kasi outweigh. Kasi baka ni General Bato, yung hindi natin ma-execute, padala na natin doon. Di ba? Pwede yun, ano? <laughs> Just a hypothetical question, Alice right here. Okay, sige. Uh, yung ano ba, yung na national, uh, hindi ba mandatory? Mandatory refusal? Or discretionary? Nasa shall o nasa may? Anyway, nasa document naman siya. Anyway. Okay, basta ganun, di ba? Basta yes. the, the treaty is structured na merong you may refuse the extradition request and then you shall refuse the extradition request. Yes, yes, Mr. Oh, Chair. Okay. Although, let, let us say, let us say, who, who decides to, to grant the extradition request? The OJ, Secretary? No, Your Honor, under our existing uh, law and procedure, it is the courts which will finally decide uh, whether an extradition request will be granted or Ayun not. Nga, finally decide, but uh, who brings the uh, case to court? The, the subject person or the DOJ? It is the Department of Justice. Ah, so, talagang hindi. so that means the DOJ desires to grant but needs court approval for the granting so that the person can oppose kung gusto niya. Yes, Your okay. Honor. So doon napapasok yung, uh, ay, sasabihin kasi nung tao, I fall under the shall not uh, category. Uh, ganun, ano? That is correct, okay. Mr. Chair. Intindihan ko na. Court, court pala talaga. Oh, shall not. Mukhang shall not. Court. Court. Uh, this resort to courts is provided in our law, di ba? Uh, yes, Your Honor. It's uh, the, our extradition law. So, siguro ang last question na lang namin is how about sa procedural matter, sir? Di ba? I, I think in the executive branch, you you un involve all of the so-called stakeholders and the other agencies before, uh, what is that? Is that the st step before the presidential uh, ratification? So, that, so w once you give it to us, that's already uh, an assurance that all, everything has been complied with. Ganun yun po. In, into the mic, uh, Yusek, para man. Yes, Your Honor. Once the president uh, signs, ratifies, uh, that means all the... Uh, 
staff work, all the consultations have already been concluded and then the negotiations. So the final step is the Senate concurrence. So this is a public hearing, so anybody opposed to the two treaties with Russia, uh, we will give you airtime, a chance to say your piece. Okay, Senator Tolentino. What's the, what's the uh, meaning of gender in so far as the right of the Philippines to refuse? How would you define gender? Because from, from the records, from the records, are you listening, Yusek? From the records of the Bureau of Immigration and from press reports, most of the Russians in the Philippines are females. Natawa si General David, di ba? So on that basis, hindi sila ma-extradite. Mas marami ang babaeng Russian sa Pilipinas kaysa lalaki. Uh, Your Honor, the clause with respect to gender as a ground for refusal for extradition has to do with uh, forms of discrimination based on gender. So if extradition will result in that person being persecuted based on gender, religious uh, beliefs, political affiliation, etc. Iranian woman who, who was granted an asylum by, by the Philippine government because she is a female as well as a political activist. Ganun ba? Uh, that, that is, uh, in, in so far as the context of that case is concerned, Your Honor, yes. Uh, she was granted political asylum precisely because she alleged that uh, she was being persecuted because of her beliefs. Uh, which ran contrary to the existing political beliefs in her country of origin. So in the same manner, a Filipina would go to Russia. She cannot be extradited if she uh, possesses a similar uh, uh, beliefs, political or otherwise, and she happens to be a lady. Theoretically, Your Honor, that can be a, an allegation made by someone who would not want to be extradited back to the Philippines. But then the onus of proving that she will be persecuted on account of gender uh, in the Philippines is with that extraditee, Your Honor. Uh, May, may I know, for my education, who granted uh, that Iranian woman so-called political asylum? And uh, what is that? Doc is that a document? Yes, you say. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Department of Justice uh, is also the authority in the grant of asylum. Uh, the Philippines is a party to the Convention on uh, Refugee and Stateless Persons. And uh, there is a unit created pursuant or obligations under that convention. In the Department of Justice, it's called the Refugee uh, and Status Persons Protection Unit, which evaluates applications for uh, refugee status and political asylum. And it is that unit which recommended the grant and eventually granted asylum to the Iranian uh, national. Is it a collegial body or one person? Who decided? Uh, the procedure, Your Honor, would essentially be an application is received, sometimes usually um, submitted to us by the UN uh, Committee on Human Rights. And uh, a, an investigator, lawyer, is tasked to go over the documents and interview not only the applicant, but all other interested persons. Um, in relation to the application. And finally, it is the head of the legal staff uh, who approves or disapproves the recommendation for uh, the grant of asylum. So the, final, the final approval is the head of the legal staff? Hindi na sa mga secretary level yan? If I recall correctly, Your Honor, uh, 
there was a operation there, there there is an operational guidelines uh, crafted during the time of then secretary de lima which delegated that power to the head of the legal staff political asylum there is a con there is a treaty and the <coughs> central tawagin na rin natin central authority is still the DOJ. So, so mahanapin na lang namin yung detalye dyan. Yes, Mr. Chair. If you want to understand the situation. Yes, uh, Senator De La Rosa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, mag Magwala ko ng isang situation. Ano, pa kung paano bang basis nyo dyan pag pabor or pag deny sa extradition ng isang Russian national limbawa isang organized crime group ng Russia engaged in cyber uh, crimes uh, dito sila na huli sa Pilipinas and they are victimizing Filipinos and Russians so ang kanilang complainant mayroong Pilipino mayroong Russian na no, pumasok ngayon yung Russian government the request for extradition nitong mga Russian sindikato para harapin nila yung kaso nila doon sa Russia. E sa, dito sa atin, meron dito yung complainant. So, kung i-grant natin itong extradition nila, pa, pabalik sa kanilang lugar sa Russia, magalit yung ating mga Pilipino complainants dahil victimized sila nitong grupo na ito. So, anong consideration natin dyan? Pa, how are we going to arrive at uh, the right uh, decision uh, uh, thank you your honor thank you your honor um, the normal procedure and this is also reflected in our uh, agreement with the Russian Federation on extradition is that we will con uh, first complete our proceedings here in the Philippines with respect to violations of our Philippine laws before an extradition request may be effected so there is a position, uh, there is actually a provision on postponed or temporary surrender uh, pending the completion of those proceedings in the requested state. Oh, pero kaya sabi nyo, it all depends pa rin sa korte na may hawak ng kaso, siguro. Dahil, per my experience noon, may nahuli kami yung mga Chinese na, at saka Hong Kong nationals na engaged sa uh, cybercrime. Tapos, kakapahel pa lang namin, kaka-inquist pa lang namin sa kaso sa korte. So, hindi pa tumatakbo yung kaso talaga. But, gumawa ng representation yung Hong Kong government na doon sa korte, nagmanipis sila na talagang kung pwede, paboran yung kanilang request for extradition. So, pumayag yung korte kahit hindi pa natapos yung kaso dito. Well, ang kinaso lang naman namin sa kanila is yung violation of RA 6, basta yung access uh, device low para sa anong RA ba yun? basta so pero meron pa rin silang kaso dito pero pinaburan ng korte so magdidepende pa rin sila sa korte ano kapag uh, pumayag uh, in in that instance your honor i think there are certain policy considerations being weighed by the courts in deciding whether to grant temporarily uh, the transfer of certain individuals. Temporary. Hindi na magbalik yan ha. Pag pinadala mo yan doon, hindi na magbalik. Kaya, hindi yan. Temporary. Diritso na talaga yan. On the part of the Department of Justice, Your Honor, we do make certain conditions that the, if ever there is such a request and there is urgency for a hearing to be conducted outside of the jurisdiction of the Philippines and there is that duty to return when we require the presence of that individual criminal or accused for the purpose of co uh, commencing or continuing with the criminal proceedings in the Philippines. In, in this case, dito sa ating treaty na ito, kasama yan, yung provision na yan? Yes, you, yes yeah. Your Honor. There is such a provision on the postponement or uh, temporary surrender uh, of, of okay. fugitives. Thank you. <laughs> ko lang, yung temporary transfer of a person in the custody of the Philippine government <clears throat> to the requesting state. Is that in the extradition treaty or in the MLA treaty? It's in the extradition treaty, Your It's Honor. in the extradition treaty, yes, yeah. 
Okay, so <clears throat> next question. Okay, can I? Yeah, in our experience with our existing extradition treaties, anong pinaka extraordinary? Anything we need we need to know? In the thirteen other extradition treaties, kumusta? Uh, do we have problems uh, implementing them? Have we refused more than what we have granted? Can you give us some information? Actually, Your Honor, the uh, Unit in charge of interna international legal cooperation at the Department of Justice is a uh, somewhat an ad hoc unit, and it's a small, really small uh, complement. Uh, but we do receive so many requests for mutual legal assistance as well as extradition requests. And so one of the um, proposals now is really to strengthen the international legal cooperation arm of the Department of Justice. But just the same, Your Honor, uh, there has been a number of uh, cases of extradition. In fact, uh, we do note from 2006 to uh, this year around seven successful extradition cases, including the case of Charlie Atong Ang, among others, Your Honor. And um, in so far as MLA cases, uh, we do have a number as well, and the most prominent of this has to do with the case of Mary Jane Veloso. Your Honor. So Mary Jane, tayo ang requesting party? Yes, Your Honor. We requested yeah. for legal assistance. Legal assistance, you know, because yes. she's not, she, she's not yes. wanted here. Yeah. For the purpose of uh, obtaining her testimony. In a case we in, have filed Yes, here. Your Honor. Yeah. And that has been the basis for the suspension you know of uh, the penalty imposed upon her uh, in the requested yeah. state, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, thank you. Yung tinanong mo kanina, uh, just would like to, may sagot din ako doon. Uh, alam mo, may, may, may laki tayong problema dyan. Eh, yung uh, dahuli natin dito ng mga Hong Kong nationals, pagkatapos pag uh, extradite natin, yung China insisting na doon sa kanila i-extradite yung Hong Kong National. Ngayon, umiiyak yung mga taga-Hong Kong, bakit ninyo ipadala sa China yan na aming national ba yan sa Hong Kong? Papatayin yan doon sa China, magpadala nyo doon yan. Kaya, yan ang nakikita kong malaki problema. Among the 13 uh, treaties na sinasabi mo, yung between China ang problema natin dahil, per my experience, ang dami kong nahuli talaga ng mga cybercrime offenders noon na Hong Kong National sila Meron pa nga, uh, basta hindi taga China, pero binibiktimize nila mga Chinese national. So ang Chinese ngayon, insisting na doon sa kanila, i-deport, ay uh, extradite kahit na Taiwanese yan, kahit na Hong Kong national yan, dahil nakakumit ng crime sa kanilang citizen. So reklamo naman itong ibang bansa, bakit doon yung ipadala? Kung mag-extradite kayo dito sa amin, may existing rin naman tayo na extradition na treaty. Paano yan? Magpapabuli pa rin tayo sa kanila na pa pabayaan natin silang kunin yung ibang tao? Uh, the observation of uh, your honor is, is really relevant. In fact, we have encountered a number of requests, not only for extradition but for deportation as well, of certain individuals, uh, sometimes Taiwanese, uh, who are being requested to be deported back to mainland China. And in this instance, we have always sought the assistance and the guidance of the Department of Foreign Affairs because of the One China policy uh, that we have. So uh, at all times, Your Honor, we seek the guidance of our foreign affairs. At all times, China wins. Parang uh, tayo. Itong request for deportation, when we act on them, under what treaty or legal framework? Iba naman yun, di ba? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, this is request for deportation uh, of foreign nationals. Usually, Your Honor, do not come under the purview of our extradition agreements because they are considered police-to-police -police, uh, assistance. And most often, Your Honor, uh, the operative principle in such requests has to do with the right of a sovereign to expel an undesirable alien within its territory. So. 
an entirely different set of rules apply in requests for deportation. Who knows if the, is a request for deportation governed by a treaty? Any agreement, convention, ano, international law principle? Ano. Kasi iba yun. And then, that's, that's a shorter, shorter route yun, USEC, no? Rather than uh, request for <laughs> extradition, request for deportation. Tama ba? Uh, that is correct, Your Honor. Uh, and usually, the, the route by which such deportations uh, happen uh, has to do with the Interpol uh, agreements to which we are likewise a party to. So okay lang pala mag sabihin namin usap lang tayo police sa police. Huwag na natin involve yung ibang departamento para mas simple ito. Police to police na wala lang tayo. Cooperation. Uh, yes, Your Honor. On, on <coughs> the pragmatic uh, side, that becomes a police to police operation or uh, interaction. But uh, essentially, the power or, or the legal authority used as basis for the removal of a, citizen, of a foreign citizen is really the power of the state uh, to expel an undesirable foreign national. Which, which should be covered by MLAT, right? Is there assistance in the legal matter to deport to us our citizen? I, purely immigration, uh, Mr. Oh, Chair, so yung, the yung matter of deportations. Okay, so, but but the but the legal uh, rules are clear. Hindi, hindi tayo nakakalito-lito anjan. Wala. Okay, as far as implementation is concerned. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, ito lang. You mentioned atong ang having been extradited. Is he Filipino? If the answer is yes, did we extradite uh, our national and why? Forgive me, Mr. Chair, but uh, based on the information relayed to me, uh, he seems to be Filipino. Oh, nga. So, uh, tapos, so the who was the requesting state? U.S.? Uh, no, it was, it's the Philippines which requested uh, the return. He was yes. returned to us. Okay, okay. That, okay. So, tama. Tama yan. Okay, correct. Tolentino. Uh, perhaps... Uh, Yusek Manalo can answer this. The Congress now, Senate in particular, is on the verge of approving the Human Security Act, which calls for the not just extradition, but the apprehension of a criminal in other states, even without an extradition treaty. The Philippines can, for instance, apprehend a person, a Filipino citizen, uh, who violated the, our National Security Act, even in other states, not part of our territorial jurisdiction, without invoking the extradition, any extradition treaty that you mentioned a while ago. How will this uh, come into play with this? Uh, New, ex new, new treaty that you are uh, asking us to approve, to ratify, because terrorism is part of that. Considering the transnational status of terrorism, that's part of the law, and I think you were part of the committee hearings before. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, I think um, I don't have the exact provisions before me, but probably one issue we would have to to contend with, of course, is the sovereignty of the other state, whether we can actually apprehend someone without at least prior consultation with the state. So, I mean, uh, if we do intend, at the very least, we would have to inform the state that we intend to apprehend this particular citizen, and if there's a problem, then I think our legal people will have to find a way of doing it, but I think it would be difficult just to go there without at least coordinating with the state concerned. Now, they, they can uh, apprehend, they have, they have the resources, they can 
apprehend uh, violators even in other jurisdictions. They've done that several times. So that's part of the Human Security Act amendment that uh, is now up for third reading in the Senate. So tinatanong ko lang kasi how, how will this play with the... Kasi iniisa-isa pa natin yung pala. Pwede naman pala kahit saan. Kasi nandito, terrorism. Di ba? Just a question, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you for that question. So, uh, so that we will take... Uh of a closer look at that uh, Human Security Act. Okay. So, okay, uh, shall we move on? Okay, okay, no, okay. okay so since I, I, I'd like to acknowledge first uh, Attorney Enrico Foss, Office of the Undersecretary for Migrant Workers Affairs of the DFA. He has been here uh, earlier, no? a, lot, a lot earlier. Captain Fedeline A. Santos of the Philippine Coast Guard. Um, it's also acknowledged. Okay. PCG Coast Guard. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. So we will now leave the the uh, subject matter of the two treaties with Russia, and uh, I think we will. Uh, the, the committee members present here are inclined to favorably endorse the concurrence of the Senate and get ilan boto kailangan yan? Two thirds, no? Two thirds. We have to work on the, our fellow members so we can get two thirds. This is a take it or leave it situation, no? You said, no, we cannot even propose amendments, no? We cannot, no? Ano, ano bang, rule on treaties, ah, si, si, ano, si Bailen, oh, Secretary Acting Asik Bailen. Uh, actually, why, Yusek Banalo, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's been agreed by uh, both sides, uh, Your Honor, so the, uh, the, the, the Senate has to concur or reject the... Uh, uh, treaties in their entirety. If there is a typographical error, we cannot even correct, di ba? Tama? That can be corrected. Huh? Just a typographical error. We can error. correct? Yes. Ah, sige. Pero yung, yung, es yung essence ng word na gusto mong palitan, hindi na pwede. Okay. So, in, if that is the case, why are you not involving the Senate in, in, in the earlier steps in treaty making? Why not involve the Senate? Na, dapat once in a while, nandiyan ka. Hindi sa full time na... 24 hours, 7 days, andiyan kami kasama sa mga ano nyo. But sana, uh, when milestones are reached, medyo inform the Senate. Kasi reality yun, pagdating dito, gusto nyo pass or pay. Ganun yan eh. So, ano, you say, can you think about that? Why is the Senate not, not being involved? Your Honor, I think we'd be very happy to, to involve the Senate. If you wish us to brief, we could give you a list of pending treaties. And uh, even at the... Uh, we're very uh, available, even at kites a working group level, if you wish. Yeah. <laughs> For major, major treaties. Senator Tolentino. What probably the good chair is saying is that prior to uh, the final uh, signing by by both heads of state, the the Senate should be given ample time to review uh, the contents in so far as uh, making it more convergent with our existing laws. Because sometimes, uh, no offense to the DFA, the treaties are signed during state visits, during impromptu after dinner. Uh, state dinners, uh, you, might, you might have some intoxicated DFA personnel passing on a folder to be signed for, no offense, to be signed. I've been, I have attended several uh, state visits, have joined state visits. So after a toast perhaps or before a toast, uh, some memorandum of agreements would be signed. So what the good chairman is saying is that uh, the, the Senate, as part of the treaty-making power of the state, should be involved even in the preliminary stage. Uh, just furnish the committee. Ito yung gagawin. We will not, we will not be, uh, be intrusive into the substantial matters, but uh, we will, the, perhaps the good chair would want to make it sure that the, the treaties to be signed which will be ratified, concurred by the Senate, are in line with existing legislation. 
siguro yung po yung gusto ni ni Senator Pimentel kasi very forward looking si Senator Pimentel ayaw niya siguro magkaroon ng conflict lalong-lalo uh, na ito yung death penalty rito nakalagay eh, eh, si Senator Bato talagang gusto niya magka death penalty na so in in, in the future siguro ganun ganun yung mas mainam it, it's it need not be a formal line of communication perhaps just through the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations siguro uh, pwedeng iabot. Alam naman natin kung kailan yung schedule ng state visit or invite the the good chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee to be part of the the, the delegation para alam niya. Just a Thank you Senator Tolentino. I, I agree with everything he said except the intoxicated part ah. Huh? Uh, not because I have not seen uh, our DFA personal drink but Malakas sila uminom eh. <laughs> They never get intoxicated. <laughs> joke lang yan, joke. Okay. Anyway, Yusek, ganun lang siguro yun. That, uh, siguro, in the... May stages naman na dinadaanan yan. Before a treaty is even finalized, there, there are stages, negotiations. So, keep if you can come up with a mechanism where the committee and the members are always informed, so just, just in case... We have an idea na to, to, to suggest to our negotiators a, a word change or a concept to be introduced, we can relay it while, while we still can. Pwede po ba yun, Yusek Manalo? Yes, Your Honor, definitely. Oh, we will, I'll work out with your okay. And then your we, we, look, we look to forward to, no. to a briefing or a listing of the pending, pending uh, yeah. the con treaties. conventions and treaties be currently being negotiated. Especially okay. uh, the major ones. Yeah, the major yeah, ones. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir. So, okay, so we will now leave the matter of the two treaties and uh, we will continue with our agenda. Do, uh, yes, yes. Tapos na ba si NBI? Bakit na NBI? Why was NBI? NBI, wala ba kayong ano? Any inputs on the treaties pala? Actually, Your Honor, we support the signing and the confirmation of the treaties. However, we... Uh, request the inclusion of the uh, of certain assurances, uh, particularly on the issue of the MLAT, especially considering that this, this may be used uh, by law enforcement as an investigative tool. Uh, Your Honor, uh, we, have, uh, we have borne witness uh, to a case uh, uh, several years ago wherein we requested for the uh, information on a certain individual, a Filipino individual, uh, whom we believe has ties, uh, there is terroristic ties uh, in a cell in the United Kingdom. However, sir, despite our uh, request, um, the same was not uh, granted, nor were we informed of the outcome of such a request, Your Honor. So considering that uh, it could have been uh, used for the uh, prosecution of that individual, uh, we request uh, that in instances of MLAT, uh, for example, uh, in cases of law enforcement, uh, we be given at least uh, procedures on how to proceed. Considering that, Your Honor, this is really important uh, with respect to international and transnational crimes. Thank you, Your Honor. So, para maintindihan ko lang, Attorney Ignacio, you, you, uh, in that, in, in that uh, incident, you were using the MLAT with UK. Yes, yun Tapos UK did not, did, not e did not respond or did not even acknowledge our request? Ano Actually, ba yan? Your Honor, we coursed our request to the Department of Justice. Tama, which is the correct procedure. Yes, Your Tama. Honor. However, ah, after then, that, wala na pong update. DOJ ba should course it through the DFA, given that it is a treaty? Sa MLAT. MLAT. Uh, generally, generally, Your Honor, uh, those requests can be coursed uh, directly to the central authority, which is so DOJ. DOJ, and then to another to central other, authority, okay. which is in the United Kingdom. Uh, so, okay, in, 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 uh, para lang malaman namin, so Attorney Ign Ignacio, walang sagot ang UK, ang UK? Up to now, Your Honor, wala pong sagot. Oh, but when did you make that request? Sometime in 2018, Your Honor. 2018? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, ang uh, advice ko na sa NBI, pag ganun, na uh, inisnap kayo, pag sila naman humingi ng tulong sa atin, huwag niyong, huwag niyong tulungan. Diba? Uh, so, uh, the of uh, non-action to our request. Actually, Your Honor, ang ironic po doon is sa kanila nang galing yung information. Uh, when we requested updates, hindi na po sila sumagot. 
Okay, maybe these things uh, take time. 20. Kaya ko kinihingi yung de- petsa, eh, 2018. Oh, uh, meron pa? Sir? Oh, who else came here for the two treaties? If you if you have something to say. Yusek David, you here for the treaty? Hindi. Ah, sa iba. Si Attorney Kalag also no, for the next one. About the PNP. For the treaties? Yes, uh, yes, please yes, Your Honor. Yama, uh, for the Philippine National Police, Your Honor, please, uh, we fully support the ratification of this treaty because the effect of this one is that we'll be extending the long, the long arm of the law longer because uh, in so far as uh, prosecution and arrest of criminals are concerned, if they're outside the jurisdiction of the, P- the Philippines and the Philippine National Police, then we cannot do anything about it. With this treaty, Your Honor, please, then uh, we could arrest and prosecute these criminals who are formerly outside the jurisdiction of this country. That's the position of the PNP, Your Honor. Thank you. How about uh, the peace po- post, uh, Philippine Coast Guard? Captain Santos is here for the, for the, for the other one. Oh, okay. okay, so those uh, who have finished with their business with this committee may, uh, may leave us, although I prepared lunch for you, sana, pero okay lang, okay lang. Okay. Are, you said, are you also done? Treaties ka lang din? Yes, Your Honor, but I think uh, yeah, one other council will be taking care of ah, the rest okay. of the items in the Okay, so agenda. thank you. So we'll now proceed to the <laughs> second, <laughs> second uh, subject matter, our bills. Thank you. Thank you to all of our resource persons. The, uh, Senator Tolentino. With the permission of the Honorable Chair and the members of this committee, uh, and in the presence of the resource persons here, Senate Bill 209, which the, this representation filed last July 2, last July 2, uh, upon the opening of the 18th Congress, is meant to address the lack of legislation. Kaya nga ito yung maganda kanina na magkatugma ang Foreign Affairs, Department of Foreign Affairs at Senate kasi napakarami nating pinasok na tratado na hindi naman self-executory. I'm referring to two laws. Two conventions, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the UNCLOS under Article 98, there is a duty to render assistance, and the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea. Immediately after that incident, July, wherein uh, 22 Filipino Filipino fishermen were uh, accidentally or uh, incidentally, intentionally hit by the Chinese vessel, there was a clamor for the Philippine government to use diplomatic channels to seek compensation. This representation, Mr. Chair, realized that there is no existing legislation. All all that we have, aside from being signatories to SOLAS, 1974, and other international conventions uh, involving the International Maritime Organization, are mere soft law participation. Meaning to say, it cannot be implemented by a Philippine court. It would need a domestic law. That is why I filed Senate Bill 209 to address this gap. And with the passage of this bill, we will now not be at the mercy of a vacant or a, a, a gap uh, in so far as legislation is concerned. Our fishermen will now be, or even a, a, an ordinary uh, vessel would now be compensated in case of an accident. The best glaring example of this happened two days ago during the Southeast Asian Games. It was not even a vessel. A surfer of the Philippines rescued an Indonesian surfer and he even got a commendation from President Widodo of Indonesia. Eh, much more pa ho pag dito sa barko. We have we have no laws that would uh, entitle an individual or a vessel to be saved. We have no laws that would entitle an individual or vessel to be rescued. 
we have no laws that would entitle an individual or vessel to be compensated. And no court will have jurisdiction. Uh, I, I, have, I have all the, the laws, the international convention signed by our country, and it would appear that if anything happens today, tomorrow, or in the near future, considering the vast coastline of the Philippines, we will, we will be at the mercy of a hit and run uh, incident, or we'll just be waiting for someone to, to rescue our fishermen, or any uh, seafarer for that matter. Mr. Mr. Chair, the purpose of this law is to fill up that gap, to implement the Safety of Life at Sea Convention, as well as to provide our fishing vessels some, some form of security, uh, to be rescued when they are in distress at sea, to be given assistance, and for Filipino seafarers likewise, to rescue and save other seafarers uh, similarly situated, uh, Mr. Chair. So that is the purpose of this uh, bill, to give teeth and to provide for a domestic legislation which was asked of us when we signed the SOLAS, the Safety of Life at Sea Convention in 1974, and which was asked of us when we signed the United, United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. So, nararapat lang po para hindi na maulit, Mr. Chair, na magkaroon ng ganitong batas, meron pupuntahan yung ating manging isda. Kung ang maging aksidente po ay Filipino vessel against a Filipino vessel, meron po tayong batas. Pag meron pong aksidente involving a Filipino vessel and a German vessel, meron tayong batas. Pag meron pong incident involving a German yacht and a Fili uh, French yacht, meron pong batas na applicable. That is the purpose of, uh, of this uh, Senate Bill 209, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Tolentino. So any reaction, inputs from our resource persons? Um, we start with you, Yusek Menalo of the DFA. Thank you very much, Your Honor, and to thank Senator Tolentino for your presentation. Just let me say very quickly that the Department of Foreign Affairs uh, sees very much the importance of having such a bill. We agree very much with the, the reasons behind it, and uh, I think it's important for the future because uh, more and more we will, our seamen and people at sea will be affected, and we must have ways of protecting them based on clear Philippine uh, law. And as not, uh, as mentioned, just purely on the general provisions of UNCLOS and SOLAS, but we note that this bill is also very much in line with that, but it now really gives us a basis to implement that. So, sir, I think uh, at least in terms of the overall purpose, principles, uh, we are very much agreeable. My only uh, request is perhaps if we could have more time to look at the, the details, especially I have to re refer also to our colleagues from Justice, uh, and that perhaps maybe there may be some specific provisions which may need some, some comment on. But I think on terms of the overall purpose, uh, I think this law is very timely, would be very timely. The sooner it can be uh, put. We have time, Yusek. Anyway, uh, we'll have Christmas break, January, and so we, we can wait for the more detailed inputs of the DFA uh, position paper. So, DOJ, Attorney Ganchun, uh, Senior State Counsel. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, and Mr. Vice Chair, the author of the bill. Um, the DOJ in general can support the passage of this bill because it is just an implementation, actually, of Article 98 of the United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea, as well as Rule 33 of the International Convention of Safety of Life at Sea. So, it's just an implementation. Um, with respect to the details, the actual substance of uh, the bill, your honors, uh, we note that, for example, in uh, Section 7, uh, because we are now imposing very stiff penalties for failure to render assistance at sea, we must be very clear on what on the acts being referred to in Section 7, because Mr. Vice Chair, it says there any violation or failure to perform any of the acts enumerated her herein, ano po ba yung acts enumerated herein? Are you referring to Section uh, uh, 5, 
three only, or, or are you referring to sections three, four, five, and six? So we need to be very clear on the enumerated acts, what acts are referred to, because now we are imposing very stiff penalties. And second, uh, Mr. Chair and Mr. Uh, Vice Chair, uh, with respect to the jurisdiction of the Philippines in the territorial sea and in the exclusive economic zone, in the territorial sea, Mr. Vice Chair, yes, we can impose the penalties of imprisonment as well as fine, because anyway, in the territorial sea, um, we have sovereignty. But there's a problem if we impose these fines in the exclusive economic zone, because Mr. Vice Chair, in the exclusive economic zone, you only have sovereign rights, no? So if you look at Article 98 of UNCLOS, it says there that every state shall require the master of the ship that flies its flag. In other words, uh, Mr. Chair, the jurisdiction in the EEC, if you fail to render assistance, actually belongs to the flag state, not to the Philippines, if the failure to render assistance takes place or took place in the EEC. So, kasi po, if you look at this bill, you impose penalties for failure to render assistance in the EEC. Uh, there's also an additional imprisonment penalty if it took place in the uh, territorial sea or internal waters. But if it's in the EEC, we might need to study again because we don't have jurisdiction to impose penalties in the EEC if this is not in relation to the exercise of our sovereign rights. In lang po, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. I, I think, Mr. Chair, the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea should be reconciled with the decided Article 98 because uh, basic rule in Admiralty Law, the, the jurisdiction of the ship uh, plying the flag is the owner, the state owner of the ship. It is considered as an extension of the territory of that state. But SOLAS, this International Safety at Life, uh, International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea, uh, disregards uh, territorial, territorial flag carrying vessels if there is emergencies such as this. So what, what would be paramount is the duty to render assistance. And, and the aggrieved vessel, if it is a Philippine flag carrying vessel, is also considered as an extension of Philippine territory. If it is registered with Marina, if it is registered with Philippine Coast Guard, and Philippine law would treat it as an incident happening within Philippine territory. Therefore, Philippine laws would also apply, especially uh, if it would result in, in uh, injuries to the, to the, not just to the uh, vessel itself, but to the uh, seafarers uh, uh, manning the vessel. So we now have a case where we, wherein we have to uh, in, uh, reconcile uh, all, all these international agreements, but the, the point here is that if they consider that as part, of, if, the, if the, the injured vessel is part of Philippine territory, then Philippine laws with apply. If the uh, offensive vessel is a Chinese vessel, then they can claim that Chinese law with apply. But then again, uh, since we have sovereign rights, it is not extending it too far because it happened in Philippine territory because of that uh, Philippine flag bearing vessel. So I think that it has, I agree with the good uh, senior state council, this has to be reconciled. But if we do not do this, what law will apply? What law will apply? The, the, the safeguards provided for by SOLAS is for uh, the duty to render assistance. Tulungan kahit saan nangyari. So the, the issue now here is liability. Saan court mag-file? Mag, mag uh, sabi ni senior state prosecutor, dahil ex exclusive economic zone, baka hindi, hindi nararapat. Eh, nangya, tinamaan nga ay Philippine vessel. Kung registered yung Philippine vessel, registered ng, ng marina, 
uh, registered uh, uh, Filipino fishermen. Meron namang procedure din doon ng VIFAR. So, again, to fill up this gap, ay kailangan siguro magkaroon ng batas. At ginagawa rin po yan sa ibang bansa. Meron din po mga ibang bansa na pag tayo naman ang pumunta ro, na tayo nakabangga, ay tayo ho yung, tayo ho yung ma ma makukulong, may impound yung ating uh, mga bangka. So, to fill up the gap, I think, um, uh, Mr. Chair, I, although I agree with uh, it has to be studied, eh, kailangan po siguro merong managot at meron dapat tumulong uh, sa, mga, sa mga seafarers in distress. Kung hindi, uh, and, and I and would like to add, uh, Mr. Chair, since the, the DFA is here, alam niyo po ba, and, and this, this probably would be subject to another uh, privileged speech, Mr. Chair, uh, alam niyo po ba, na sa dinami-dami ng ating konvensyon na pinasukan sa, sa buong mundo tungkol sa dagat, there are 60 plus more or less conventions uh, na, na in place ngayon. Ang Pilipinas po, ang Pilipinas po ay nag-approve lamang ng, there are 60 international maritime organization conventions. The Philippines only joined 27. Ay eh, pinakamara, pinakamahaba yung coastline natin. So paano natin mapoprotektahan yung ating mga mangingisda, yung ating mga seafarers, pati yung mga bisita nating barko. We are now, we are not a a signatory to the International Convention for Safe Containers. Ang daming dumadaan na na mga barko sa dito sa sa sa, sa North Harbor. Hindi pala tayo uh, signatory doon na may mga container van. We are not a signatory to the Torre Molinos Protocol of 1993 relating to the Torre Molinos International Convention for the Safety of Fishing Vessels. 1993 pa ho yan. Ang dami ho nito, kung isa-isahin ko, may, may iba na yung topic, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Ang gusto ko lamang pong sabihin, Hindi na nga tayo sumali sa mga international conventions. We are not a, a participant to the 1979 International Convention on Maritime Search and Rescue. Hindi tayo participant yung sa Search and Rescue, 1970 SAR Convention on Safe uh, uh, Search and Rescue. Hindi na nga tayo sumali doon. Eh, hindi pa rin natin bibigyan yung ating mga kababayan ng karapatang magkaroon ng uh, system of redress. Ang dami ho nito, Mr. President, kung iisa-isahin ko ito, napaka-importanting mga conventions na sa palagay ko ay nakaligtaan ng Department of uh, Foreign Affairs sa dami ho nito uh, na nakalusot sa atin. We are not even a, a participant to the Hong Kong International Convention for the Safe and Environmentally Sound Recycling of Ships. Kaya nakikita nyo sa Pasig River, may mga nakaparada mga barge, kinakalawang na. Paano malilinis ni Secretary si Mato yung Pasig River? Kinakalawang mismo sa nakapark po doon. Yung iba po, nakita ko, five years na, nakapark. May nakatira na hong tao. May nakasampay, nandun na ho yun. So, ang dami ho nito. What I'm saying, Mr. President, there might be some issues concerning the exclusive economic zone. But we have, we have the right to invoke the safety of our seafarers and fishing vessels, as well as the right to protect foreign seafarers and fishing vessels. Uh, recipro reciprocal naman po yun. Sa dami na nating pinasok. There, there might be issues, but let them question. Let them question. The, the, they can also invoke that. Kung may, nabanggit ko kanina, halimbawa, a Chinese fishing vessel nabangga ng Vietnamese fishing vessel Within that same area, recto bank. O di, pumasok kayo sa pa regional trial court of Palawan. Di ba? There will be a system of recourse. And that, that is what uh, international conventions, international law is asking us to domesticate, to localize international law for the benefit of seafarers. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. But I agree with uh, Attorney Ganchon na uh, pag-aralan ng konti yan. And we await... Uh, their position paper.
Now, Attorney Ganchon, can you guide the committee with your insights, more details on your insights? Thank you, Mr. Chair. In yes. writing uh, na lang, head in writing. Yes, and ah. we will submit all of this. We will be yeah. replacing our position paper. Mm -hmm. And just to clarify, uh, Mr. Chair, we don't have, we have juris, in the EEZ, we of course have jurisdiction if the person who failed to render assistance, the master of the ship, is a ship that is registered in the Philippines. Of course, we have jurisdiction, but if it, if it is a foreign vessel that failed to render assistance in the EEC, there's a problem with the exercise of jurisdiction because under UNCLOS, it is the flag state that has jurisdiction over the master of that ship who failed to render assistance. So that's why we cannot impose the penalties we provide here in our bill on the master of that ship that is registered in a foreign state, Mr. Chair. But all this we will place in our position paper. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Because we can argue naman na kama in the absence of domestic law governing the situation. Eh, ito na nga. That's why ito na ang bill ni Santo Tolentino is now providing for the domestic law. So pwede na, siguro. I don't know, tignan natin sa international law experts. Sige, who else? Uh, Asik, Kalonge, uh, Monte Alegre, Isik David. Uh, sige. Yes, sir. Asik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have a brief statement to make uh, in support of the bill. Uh, the Philippines has reaffirmed in various international fora its commitment to the principles of international legal order, especially those pertaining to maritime and ocean-related issues, and has highlighted the importance of rendering assistance to persons in distress at sea. The Department of Foreign Affairs supports Senate Bill Number 209, as it promotes compliance uh, by the Philippines with its obligations to international conventions, such as the 1982 UN Convention on the Law of the Sea and the International Maritime uh, International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea. Notably, um, as uh, the situation in the waters um, uh, attest, the Philippine Coast Guard, the Philippine Navy, and the Philippine National Police Maritime Group uh, have been extending all possible assistance to crews and fisher men and women who may have been caught in unfavorable weather conditions resulting from low pressure weather occurrences in Philippine waters. Thus, the bill would help in the ins institutionalization and integration of activities and initiatives of concerned government agencies in rendering assistance to persons in distress at sea. Uh, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to uh, react to the statement of uh, Senator Tolentino on the big number of treaties that uh, we have not been participants to. And I'll just cite one example, sir. Uh, on the Torremolinos uh, Convention, uh, that has been pending for quite some time. Uh, that is sprung from uh, an agreement that arose in uh, South Africa. I think it started in South Africa. Um, my information, uh, I just came from uh, London where we campaigned for the IMO uh, seat that we won. And uh, I think there are commitments there that we cannot fulfill. Because for every convention that we ratify, uh, attached to it are certain commitments. For example, uh, um, we have an office in UNIO, one of our offices, that uh, states our contributions every year. And uh, if you look at our contrib contributions, they're mostly token, like $5,000, $10,000. So uh, if you take a second look at uh, our commitments, our capabilities in, uh, in, in, in giving our share and having our share uh, you know, inputted into the overall scheme of these treaties, we can. But uh, I think in the past, there have been hesitation because of uh, our limited means, uh, Senator. So one of the reasons why we are not participants into these various treaties, some of which I cited, is because we lack the ability to pay the uh, organizational fee. Among others, sir. Uh, some, for example, in the Torremolinos Convention, if I remember correctly. So I, I would suggest to the DFA family, during budget hearings, you provide this committee, you provide the Senate with, co with copies of pending... Uh, conventions wherein which we are not participants because we failed to, to pay the fees. Um, parang nag golf yan, hindi ka po nagbayad, hindi ka talaga palalaroin doon. Th there was diba? a time, sir, uh, that uh, we had difficulty uh, So can we have a list share. of that? A listing of that? Kasi 
uh, malaking nawawala din sa atin kung hindi tayo participant. Yeah, hindi course. tayo kasali kasi hindi tayo nagbayad pala ng entrance fee. Oh. Yeah, of course, entrance sir. Entrance fee na lang yan. That can be part of your budget. Diba? Pero token lang ho ang contributions natin. And, token, uh, hindi pa tayo makabayad. Uh, kuminsan po. In the past. But I think we are uh, able to afford uh, more So can we have, days. with the permission of the good chair, can we have a listing of that? Yung baka pag hindi tayo makabayad ng two consecutive years, tanggal na tayo. Hindi lang ho payment ng problema, Senator. There are also commitments that we have to make. Uh, the, the, for example, um, on the quality of vessels, uh, uh, our, our fishermen are, are not really of the industrial type. We uh, are the fourth largest uh, vessel constructing country in the world. Number four na tayo ngayon. Si Nabota Cebu natin, Bataan. Mm -hmm. uh, records will show, pinakamalaki tayo, hindi pa kasama yung Hanjin sa Subic. So, uh, pa pa paano na yan kung hindi tayo kasali? Pinakamarami tayong distributor na, pinakamalaki tayong distributor ng mga semen, taon-taon, mm -hmm. uh, halos lahat ng barko sa buong mundo, may Pilipino. Yeah, And yet, that's, hindi tayo kasali, baka That's, that's acknowledged. That's why we always win a seat in the IMO, uh, Senator. Uh, but uh, we, we submit that we have uh, failings uh, in that regard. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't worry. We, we will submit. Dalawa na lang si, uh, lists with particulars na lang. For example, all the conventions we are not, um, uh, Philippines is not a member to, and then reasons why we did not join. Uh, yan. Kung, kung alam ninyo, like fee and other conditions. Ganun, para, to guide the committee. And commitments. Ah, yeah, commitments. We have to attach to those. Oh, the commitments that you think we cannot comply with. That's right. Sige, uh, Yusek Manalo. Thank you, Chair. I Yes, I was going to, I, I support your point. We will list down maybe those major uh, conventions. Of course, as uh, Asa Colong said, it's not necessarily only the contribution. Because I know I attended some conferences in Toro Medinos. There were some real problems, uh, not only for the Philippines, even our local industry had some problems. But the uh, point, Jan, is uh, what we can do, we'll maybe list down some of the major issues. Now, maybe why we cannot sign them. We, then we can have a further discussion in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, continue, sir. Okay, na? You're done? Uh, Asek, you're done? With your, your, your statement, tapos na po. After na, sige. Okay. Asek Monte Alegre? Okay, na. Yusek David? Uh, sir, perhaps this is also related as far as, as far as our armed forces is concerned and its relations with the other Navy. Uh, it is imposed upon the selves of, the, our, arm, of our Navy to help distress uh, or uh, lives and properties at sea. And we have uh, signed a code of unplanned encounter at sea between our Navy. Uh, this is to, uh, this about the situation of two navies at sea. But uh, we support the bill, sir. Uh, and uh, our experience with the Navy is that uh, we have a bilateral agreements with other nations, with us, such as uh, Malaysia and Indonesia, and we help part of the part of the stipulations that we help civilian or maritime maritime vessels at sea. Thank you, sir. So, okay, yun. Uh, kusa. Kusa na natin. Ayan, kusa. Pero, of course, it is, cannot be present. Uh, uh, among Navy, sir. Among uh, Navy, sir. It is a... Yung nga, sir, kusa. It is uh, a... Inculcated. Is inculcated uh, among yeah. the personnel. Uh, it is their obligations uh, yes, uh, of uh, our military personnel. Okay, so, Coast Guard, ca Captain Santos. Yes, sir. Um, good morning, sir. I am Captain Fedlin Santos for the Philippine Coast Guard. Um, as well for the Philippine Coast Guard, sir, we do agree with the bill. However, we just also want to say that we have to take into consideration, as already mentioned earlier, that there are also um, related agreements and treaties and conventions that are existing that the, the Philippines has yet to accede or sign into. So these are important instruments that can be or are related to the present bill, sir. And as well as, we also have to take into, into consideration, especially the award that we have 
we all know that there are parts of our um, of waters under our jurisdiction that are a bit really controversial. So we also have to take into consideration such uh, the effect that it will have on this proposed bill, as well as other laws that are already existing that are not in consonance with international conventions that we have signed into. I, I, I believe, sir, this is already, this can be a way wherein we will consolidate and hopefully, sir, harmonize this so that we will be much more um, compliant with our obligations in the international realm, sir. That, that would be all for the Philippine Coast Guard. And as well, also, sir, we do, um, all the Coast Guard personnel are trained to actually lend a hand, especially at sea, once we see anybody who are in need. That will be all, your honors. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, can you also help us? You, did, did I hear you correctly that you are aware of laws, existing laws, which in your opinion need to be changed now or amended to conform with international agreements and treaties we have entered into? Yes, sir. Adit, can you, yes, sir. So, so can you give us a written communication, identify uh, those laws or provisions or sections, etc.? and then why the need to change them to comply with what? Para mag-guide po tayo. Yes, Mr. Ah, okay. Chair. Ah, may, we already may time, have, we, may we, time we, naman tayo. We have time to, for that. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Ah, yes, sir. Asak, galongge. Uh, with the permission of my uh, head of delegation here, uh, I think it can be asserted uh, in support of this bill that uh, the uh, duty to uh, render assistance to seafarers in distress is part of customary uh, law. And in fact, uh, it's very rare to see uh, a seafarer uh, not assist someone in distress. It, it is like uh, once a senator. Even pirates. Uh, well, Even pirates, it, they assist. It, it's like once a It's like um, uh, navigating in the desert. There is a rule among, uh, for example, the Bedouins that if they see somebody in distress, they have to assist him by giving him water. You know, because it can happen to anyone. Just, you don't know. So um, uh, law is necessary to enforce uh, the penalties that you, you cited, Senator, but uh, the instinct to save a uh, human life uh, in the waters uh, is uh, built in to all mariners, military or civilian. That's why it's provided for under the law. If the master of the ship will not be able to assist, he should enter that into his logbook the reasons why he cannot assist. And then report, no? report the situation to authorities so that they can assist. And yeah, that's, that's in the bill. No? And to the port that he is uh, destined. There are at least five provisions of the own clause uh, in this regard. Article 39, 94, 194, 242, 262, among others. Thank you for that, ASEC. Uh, Attorney Kalag of Marin Marina. Uh, good morning, Your Honors. As far as the Maritime Industry Authority is concerned, we likewise support the bill as this will uh, give effect to have a national law on the, on the part of the Law of the Sea Convention, particularly on this uh, provision cited uh, in Section 3. And uh, also, as far as the Marina is concerned, we are effectively implementing in accordance with our mandate, the provision on ensuring the seaworthiness of ships registered in the Philippines, and likewise, those which are operating overseas, which are registered in the Philippines. That's our mandate under RA 9295. Likewise, on the purpose of registration, and although this, uh, this function is already part of the generally provided in the law of the Sea Convention, likewise reiterated in the Solas Convention, and this is how, as far as Marina, we are doing this to ensure the seaworthiness. And likewise, under R10635, uh, which was uh, passed sometime in 2014, we are uh, in charge of the competence of the seafarers, all seafarers, uh, to be deployed in domestic trade and likewise to be deployed in the overseas trade. So we are, uh, th this is only our, fun our function as far as the uh, ships operating abroad is concerned. And likewise, uh, we would like to also to inform the body that 
Marina is coordinating with other agencies for the ratification of some maritime IMO conventions as mentioned before. So I think we have only 20 plus out of 60 conventions, but we are working in coordination with other agencies for the ratification of those conventions which relate to functions of the office. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sir, Cap Captain Quinto from the Navy. Sure, uh, I am Captain Salvador Henry Quinto, sir, from uh, N2 Philippine Navy, sir. Uh, as far as the Navy is concerned, sir, we fully support the initiative, sir, given by, uh, um, made by uh, the good Senator Tolentino, sir. Um, in as much as um, it supports the the interests of the Filipino people and it is actually supportive of all our international commitment. Um, we also would like to highlight, sir, that uh, we would like to, to, to relate this on a uh, specific provision of our uh, revised penal code on Article 275, which is about the abandonment of person in danger. Uh, relatedly, uh, uh, this crisscross with each, but, but most of the time, sir, this provision of the revised penal code, sir, is mostly applicable on road issues. But so uh, we believe also, sir, that we have to be expanded, sir, because right there and then, sir, the issue of territoriality is always at because uh, in our contiguous zone, only CIQ can, all, can only be uh, taken into consideration. And uh, our EE says it, it's only about our sovereign rights. So uh, we have to really look at this. So we have made a lot of uh, um, look at this provision, and uh, we believe uh, they are relatively the same, except that um, this article provided for in the uh, in, in our RPC should be expanded to cover issues at sea. Thank you, Captain. Who else? Who, who else came here for this uh, bill? Ah, Senator, Senator Bato. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, having heard lahat ng sinasabi ninyo na talagang yung uh, rescuing lives, saving lives sa mga tao na nangangailangan ng tulong, eh, talagang moral uh, responsibility yan ng isang human being, di ba? So, yung tao na hindi talaga tumutulong, napakasamang tao yun. So, yun ba magiging conclusion natin doon sa nangyari na yun na binangga o nabangga tapos hindi tinulungan? Di ba? Parang that's a very isolated incident and uh, I think the more na suportahan natin itong bill ni Senator Tolentino to avoid, uh, to, to, to avoid further uh, uh, future incidents like that. Dahil nga, very isolated nga, pero napakasama na pangyayari yun na hindi tunulungan yung tao na in distress, na nabangga, iniwan lang. So the more na, uh, Mr. Chair, na talaga suportahan natin itong bill na ito. So anybody else? Okay, wala na. So ganito na lang. No, uh, no, no one is against the bill. Uh, uh, the refinements suggested can be done uh, within a te technical working group environment. So ganun, the chair now will call for a technical working group to work on Senate Bill number, number yan? 209. And the committee secretary will uh, invite our, our resource persons or your representatives to help us refine the bill and capture the international law rules that we want to be captured in, and then so that they, they will surely be part of our domestic legal system. Yun, 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 that is the, the intention of the bill. Tama ba? Para tama, according to Senator Tolito. Okay? So we will now leave the subject matter. Working lunch na lang po tayo, but we'll, we'll try our best to end by 12, 12.30, the latest. So can we now discuss Senate Bill Number 376 of Senator De Lima? Uh, Yusek Manalo, yes, sir. Thank you very, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Chair, Your Honor. Uh, Yes, on the Senate yes, bill, uh, yes. now under consideration, well, first, as we believe the intent of the bill is to motivate, uh, promote policies consistent with the uh, arbitral award, as well as raise awareness, 
uh, the award and its significance to Philippine uh, sovereignty, sovereign rights in the West Philippine Sea, we uh, certainly um, fully support the, the bill. Uh, we also feel it, it's also a way of instilling uh, not only greater awareness, but perhaps a sense of pride too in that we have uh, been able to succeed. Uh, that being said, I just want to make a couple of further comments. The first is uh, the, um, the arbit oh, this is really on the arbitral award. The arbitration case was really focused on maritime entitlements and not, not uh, awarding territories or, or sovereignty or determining the sovereignty. And it was, of course, under the uh, arbitral tribunal, which was uh, constituted under Article 7 of the UNCLOS, and that the permanent court of arbitration uh, acted as the registry for the tribunal. But the, the, the main point is that it was essentially a legal victory and not a victory in the broader sense as if uh, it was a decisive or final victory over anyone in particular. In fact, uh, the arbitral award is now part of international law, so it benefits everyone. And so um, if I might just s suggest perhaps that we, the intent of the bill is laudable, we support it. Uh, perhaps though the title might be a bit misleading and misinterpreted, perhaps we could look at a, another title rather than say uh, victory, we could say uh, celebrating or honoring West Philippine Sea Day or something along those lines. But of course, the substance and content would, would remain the same and the purpose we fully support. So that's just our uh, observation on, on the bill. But as I said, it's, uh, we, we laud the, um, the purpose of the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek Manalo. Any other comments? Yusek David? S sir, may I My comment is that uh, we support the intent of the bill. But if the intent really is to have a... a a capability of this victory in the West Philippine Sea or in South China Sea. We must have a program in the South China Sea so that we have, we can impose our sovereignty, our sovereign rights in the, in the, in the South China Sea. So in the day of July, on July 12th, we must be able to assess our capability in the South China Sea or in the Western Philippine Sea. Uh, I do not know if we have real victory, uh, if we do not have those capability, or impose the, our, uh, our rights in the South China Sea. So we need to, again, sir, we need to, as far as the defense and the armed forces, we need to upgrade our capabilities and capacity in the South China Sea, which is more important. Thank you, sir. Did the 2020 budget help in this regard? Certainly, sir, but uh, we, do, we cannot have those impositions or the, what's this, uh, we can have, we don't have those capabilities to, full capabilities to impose our uh, will in the EZ, sir. Not, not, not but really, it will no. help. But it will uh, help, sir. Does the 2020 budget improve the capability yes, sir, of yes, the armed forces to patrol, to, what, to, to police, to supervise, to, to visit the EZ? It improves our it capabilities, improves, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'll discuss with my staff uh, whether this measure is properly within the jurisdiction of this committee because uh, this is foreign relations. This is actually a decla declaration of a special day in the Philippines, which is d routinely done by another committee. Uh, ibang committees yun, eh. Okay, so, but we heard the, the, uh, the support, statement of support from the DFA through USEC Manano. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, yes, Captain Santos. Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, as far as the Philippine Coast Guard is concerned, we would like to suggest that instead of celebrating or just declaring a day for celebration for the award, um, I think the Philippines has yet to concretize anything if ever, what we won from the award. So I think it's the more important thing. Something that we can use, something that we can really, sorry, your honor, something that we really can say that we have taken and we can contribute to the well-being of our uh, nationals. So instead of 
uh, I think it would be premature to celebrate the day without having taken something that is really concrete from the award yet. So maybe if the Senate, uh, Mr. Chair, can concentrate on coming up with something else more substantial as far as the award is concerned. Thank you. Does the 2020 budget help the Philippine Coast Guard patrol our waters? Yes, Mr. Natulu Chair. May, may dagdag ba? Natulungan ba? Yes, Mr. Chair, because oh. there are a lot okay. of things that will help develop and modernize the Philippine Coast Guard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, kasi nasa, sometimes yung budget, yung actual help eh. But as, as, as stressed by Yusek Manalo, legal victory kasi, legal victory. Ako, ako mismo, ako mismo, I, I realize the contribution of the Philippines to the enrichment of international maritime law. Through, through this case which was filed. Yeah. Okay. Sige. Ah, yes, uh, uh, sige. Uh, ladies first muna. Attorney Ganchun and then Asek Kalongke. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. Your Honor, we, uh, on the part of the Department of Justice, we find not, nothing legally objectionable to the passage of this bill because anyway, it is within the plenary power of Congress under the Constitution, including the Senate, to declare certain days as holidays. And also this arbitral award under UNCLOS is final and binding and it forms part of international law. In fact, we can also say that the concepts of the EEC and Continental Shelf discussed in the arbitral award also form part of the national legal system system because these concepts are already considered as part of customary international law and under the constitution generally accepted principles of international law form part of the law of the land. So it's also part of the law of the land. Now we just would like to point out and this is mentioned by Yusek Manalo, there's some inaccuracies in the title of the bill actually uh, Mr. Chair. For example it says uh, to commemorate the historic decision of the permanent court of arbitration. It's not actually the decision of the PCA, it's a decision of the arbitral tribunal constituted under UN clause. So the PCA just provided for the registry, the acceptance of pleadings, provided for uh, admin services, but it's actually the arbitral tribunal under UNCLOS who issued the award. And it says a decision in favor of Philippine sovereignty. Decision in favor of Philippine sovereignty over the West Philippine Sea. As mentioned by Yusek Manalo, uh, it, the award talks only about sovereign rights. It didn't uh, discuss uh, sovereignty. So there are, there are two inaccuracies in the title of the bill. But there's nothing legally objectionable to the passage of the bill. Anyway, we defer to the wisdom of the Senate on the passage of this bill. Thank you so much, Mr. Asek Kalong. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it appears to us, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, the intention of the bill is really to um, enhance or raise the uh, maritime domain awareness and consciousness of our people and uh, thereby uh, appreciate the country's uh, patrimonial heritage. Hence, um, we believe that it would be, it would be more appropriate um, to make uh, the commemoration more of a domestic uh, affair rather than an, an international relations uh, related one. Hence, uh, section three of the draft bill uh, indicates that uh, either or all of the following agencies should be directly involved. These are uh, the ILG, uh, DENR, National Historical Commission, the Philippine Coast Guard, um, and perhaps the Philippine Navy uh, should be suitable agencies to plan and implement activities in observance of the day. And I, uh, I um, submit to the uh, previous uh, statements regarding the inaccuracy of the title. And um, if we could change the word uh, victory to something else, because in the Inaman Ho decisive, in fact, as of today, we haven't uh, even recovered the uh, features that we have lost. So legal victory, according to Yusek Manalo, is it, but uh, it's not a decisive victory in the sense na uh, nanalo tayo and then na-recover natin yung mga nawala sa atin. Thank you. I think alam naman natin when we filed the case, it was not to recover the man. But anyway, uh, so thank you for all of those uh, inputs. So we will defer uh, action on this measure, but st still, no, welcome submission of position papers uh, or any other communication regarding this bill. Okay, so let's move to the last item in our agenda, which is the resolution 
to consent, no? To, to consent to the conferment of an award to His Excellency Raul S. Hernandez, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary, when he was uh, assigned to the Republic of Korea. So, after your lunch, kaya mo na. After your lunch, wag magmadali, Yusek, okay. After your lunch, kaya, Yusek Manalo, this is required by the Constitution. So, this means that it must be a concurrent uh, resolution. Both the House and the Senate must give its consent. Kasi ang sabi ng Constitution, Congress eh. Uh, who can help us here? Oh. Your Honor, I've informed that it will require the uh, House and Senate concurrence. Is, is it moving in the House? No. Okay, sir. Come in. Gawin na lang kung kabasa. Yung form lang. Sino siya? Okay. I understand that the uh, House Committee on Foreign Affairs has cleared it. Cleared it already. Okay. Okay, okay so we will just, ano, siguro, uh, the wording, the content, we will coordinate so that once passed, same versions, then we're done. Sige, hmm. uh, okay. uh, we have, sige, na our draft, we will coordinate carefully with the draft of the House so that, you know, as I stated earlier, the version passed there should be almost 100% as the version passed here. Wala tayong problema din. So we congratulate our Ambassador Raul S. Hernandez for his uh, exemplary and maybe extraordinary uh, service and achievements while he was Ambassador to the Republic of Korea because it is the government of the Republic of Korea diba? which wants to recognize him. Oh. So, who are, who are we, the Congress of the Republic of the Philippines, to deny him the recognition? Gusto na natin ito, pero kailan ito? Kailan nila ibibigay? Baka, baka mainip sa pag, paghintay. <laughs> huh? Ano? By December na daw. By December? Oh, so we have two now. Okay. Sige, the Senate will do its duty kasi ano na daw to, baka time press tayo rito. So, gawin na natin yung ating, but to talk, to coordinate ka agad. Sponsor na natin. Yung wording ma, final na, ganda na natin. Uh, Your Honor, yeah, according to our information from the Korean Embassy here in Manila, uh, they would, the government would, Korean government would like to no have the uh, authority to do it by the end of the year uh, but of course we'll 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 consult with them still pero that's the last information we got from them we'll do it ito may papabilis na namin syempre we we put ourselves in the position of the ambassador we, we want the recognition eh. so okay the senate committee uh, the, the staff will work closely with the dfa so that the wording will be perfect and then we will, I will sponsor it immediately. And then we will have to coordinate with the House to, to try to pass, to pass it as is. Or you know, para, then it's done. Okay, then it's done. Thank you. Hmm? Or you adapt nila or whatever. Sige. Okay, so is that uh, everything? Any other matter? Ah, oh. so, oh, yes, sir. Asik. Hello, Nge. Sir, uh, I wish uh, Senator Tolentino is still here. Because um, binawi nyo sir yung ano yung nagiinom kami ganon pag may visit. As a 35-year veteran of the department, I I uh, like to uh, put an exception. Kasi on the record hui to no, natetep hui to. And Pero uh, gawin natin uh, ano na on the record na yung sinabi no. ni Santo Tolentino joke. Yung, yung sinabi ko na panggatong joke din. Oh. Ah, okay. okay. Di, wala na sir, kung joke yun. Kasi sinabi niya, yung mga agreements daw, uh, pag may joke reason. Joke uh. No, before, the, before those agreements are read, sir, malaki ang staff work. 
Malaki yung yeah. staff work ko. Complete staff work, oh. process, uh, timetable, oh. periodic meetings. Hindi ho basta-basta yun. Exchange of visits. Yan, yan, lahat yeah, yan. I'd apa. like to correct the apa, records, apa. sir. Thank you. So sir. let the records reflect that uh, what, whatever was stated about uh, our DFA professionals drinking or being intoxicated are all jokes. Okay. Wala yun, wala yun. Jokes na to lighten lang yun, to lighten the mood, okay? So, okay, so we are now at the end of our uh, very productive hearing. So, salamat po sa inyong lahat for coming on time and thank you for your active participation and for your insights. Okay? Okay, ano yan? Yes, we invite you for the TWG on the bill, on the Good Samaritan at Sea bill. Okay? Please contact our uh, committee secretary. Sukan daw for those who want to help us uh, perfect the law. Okay, so maraming salamat po. Our hearing is hereby adjourned.